This is part two of the video series on using Plex and in this video we'll take a look at using Plex media players to stream your uh, content inside your network and uh, in the next video we'll look at how to actually stream your content to a phone or a mobile device outside your home. So in the first video I actually set up a server and I'm using a Mac and so the server is um, already been configured so if we go back and have a look at that back into the media manager and let's just shut some of these tabs down and it's been configured and I have some TV shows uh, in there just as a, as a demonstration so there's there's one folder of TV shows and then there's one season inside that and they've been correctly named and identified and so if you wanted to, to look at how you set up your server uh, go back and have a look at first video and I've added some more channels so there are some um, um, uh, music it's going into the music channels this one is just computer programs that are audio and then there's some video channels and so what we want to look at now is how do we actually play this media and stream it uh, to other devices I can play it from here, but that's not the point of, of actually sitting in front of your computer and playing the video from there. You want to be able to play it on a, an iPad or an Android tablet or an Android phone or an iPhone or a TV. So how do you do that? So in the um, Mac and Windows, there is a media center. So if I open this, uh, I could play all of my Plex content in the media center. Perhaps I've got a, a, t a computer that's connected to a TV, so a Mac Mini, for example, that might be connected to a TV, uh, and I can watch my Plex content on the TV using a remote control that is on the iPad or a phone. And so in the, um, the media center on the, on the Mac, allows you access to your TV shows, to your queue, as long as you're sort of logged in and signed into MyPlex. And, and I have, I've signed into MyPlex, so it's going to give me all the videos in my queue so that I can watch them as soon as the server uh, goes in. So I've got two videos in the queue. I'm using the keyboard because the, uh, the Plex Media Center essentially is keyboard then you have to actually enable the mouse to work uh, you can watch your TV shows you can watch your movies and all of this information is coming from the Plex media server so the media server has to be on and it has to be installed and the computer that the media server is installed on needs to be on for this to work it's inside your network so it's your, your router that's just serving out the appropriate IP addresses for the devices. So if I wanted to watch a movie from the Plex Media Center, I could go into one of the movies, say this one, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Uh, pick where I want to start from or where I want to resume from. And then it goes. Let's quit out of that. Um, there's some channels there. Why don't you go back up here? Music channels, so 5x5 five five is, uh, is one of the channels that has a whole lot of computer programs, but they're audio. So it goes into the music channel. And uh, normally these might be programs that you listen to as a podcast. We'll just wait for the server to respond. And these are all the different shows, and they're all uh, audio shows. So exit out of there, so it's... Uh, iPhoto because the server has been configured to share the iPhoto library so I could show my photos on here if I wanted to. All the video channels so they come from the channel directory uh, and it's a matter of picking, picking um, one of those and looking for a program. So Revision 3 is a network and it has a number of shows. So featured shows and a number of computer-based, uh, technology-based uh, shows that you can watch. 
Some of them are game shows, so these are all parts of your channel. Now, from the Media Center, you can actually add new channels. So if we went down to the channel directory, you can find new channels. So you can see what's, what, what is a new channel that, that, that hasn't come up yet. So perhaps Ustream. And if I wanted to add that channel, all I do is install it from here. Now you do the same thing in the media server. You can go into the channel directory and add new channels to your uh, Plex media center through that. Or as you see now, you can do it here. So that's successfully in installed. So this is live streaming video. Escape back out. So you can add new channels. And if you want to watch the channel, they're in the video channel, and there's the new Ustream channel. Uh, there is, within preferences, a number of things that you can change, and you can just go through each of those and changing whatever you like, and then go back and pick a different one. So appearance, videos, where you might choose you know, your player, your um, resolution, etc. So if you have some uh, in audio as well, if you're going into music, if you have a 5.1 sound system or you wanted to play some, some uh, music off an online um, source like Last.fm, sort of get back, it's just quite... It's just not easy to, doing this with the keyboard, trying to change things. In the pictures, I think it was in the system, just trying to find the mask one. This is where you are signed into MyPlex, so signed in, so it can actually, uh, you know, it can, it can get my cue because it knows it's me and the hardware. So what sort of um, display preferences do you want so you can change that? The audio, you can change the audio if you've got a, a different audio device instead of the audio, the output device that, that's the fault, which is the computer speakers. The input device, this is where you need to go in and enable your mouse, otherwise all you're using is the, so I'm just going down to that and pressing return, so I can now use my mouse to navigate. And there's all these other things, energy saver and screen saver. So there's, there's stuff in the preferences. So once you've set all that up, there's not really that much to set out. You could, you could watch this, uh, your media, through the Plex Media Center on a computer. The only way it's useful, I see, is if, if you have it uh, installed on a, uh, a computer that's connected to a television. Uh, but what I would be using it for, so let's just get out of this, and the only way to get out of it, we've got to quit, uh, is to use an iPad, for example. So how do we actually look at our media, our stream our media from the Plex server to a mobile device? All right, so here's the uh, iPad, and I have a Plex app that I have downloaded to the iPad, and I'll just use search to find it. So there's a Plex app. So as soon as I open the Plex app, it comes up with all of my media from the Plex server, and it actually sort of looks virtually the same as if I was to use the, the Plex media center. So I can get to the TV shows, and the only shows I have is French Fields, so it gives me the season, it's giving me all the cover art and all of the episodes and just starting one up. And it's probably not going to play because uh, it's playing on there now. So it plays it and it's good quality because I've set that up in the server, what sort of uh, resolution I wanted the videos to be. Uh, Go back home so I can get all the different channels. So if I wanted to look at uh, TED Talks, I can open that from the app and pick whichever one I want. So it's got all of the, the navigation, so I could pick uh, you know, best of the web. So looking at different channels within TED Talks to find something that I want to play. Nothing in that one. 
bold predictions, stern warnings. So it's in that. Taking too long to load. Let's go back. Food matters. So some of them do take a bit of time to load, depending on how uh, big the quality is and how many videos are in there. But they're coming up now, and you, you're getting the, uh, the little summary. You can get some information from each about each video. So it gives you an idea. It's 480p, so it's not too um, no, high to stream. So, I mean, I'm not sure what that one does. And I can play it, or I can share it. What's the sharing button do? Nothing, by the look of it. Loading. Oh, so social networking. Now. So there's, there's a bit I can do there. Now if I wanted to play the queue, anything in my queue is already there because I've signed in to MyPlex. And these are the things I've recently added and recently watched. Uh, down in the settings, there are things that you can change in there. So you can sign into MyPlex through here, sign out. Uh, that's why it knows uh, about my queue, in the home screen, which what do you actually want to show. So if I didn't want to have on deck, which is what I'm currently using, I could turn that off and it's going to disappear from here. So you can change things there. I'm not sure if you can move them. I think you can in your home screen. You can move them around. So uh, if I want my recently added to be up the top there, I could change that. And it's moved it up to the top. Uh, sync you need your prescription for video so you can set the uh, standard of, of streaming there so my, so locally I want 1080p to be streamed if it's, if it's possible if the video is in 1080p and remotely so if I'm looking at my uh, streaming my, my Plex media and I'm outside my network then I don't want it to be so far so maybe 720 might be too much but uh, we'll sort of stick with 720 and see what we get. But you can change the resolution if you're getting um, lag or it's stuttering or whatever, it's not working properly, just change the quality. Um, same with the audio. The audio is enabled and the volume advanced. Finding servers on, direct streaming on, so just keeping everything turned on. Clear the data if it's starting to... Uh, Let's see what happens when we do that. Just clear the cache data, debugging, etc. Um, so there's not much to set up really. It just seems to work. The server. So the server that I'm using, and this is sort of important for when you're actually streaming from outside your network. The um, device you're using needs to be able to find that network server. So the default server, the only one I've got is the iMac old, and it actually gives me the IP address. Uh, the 192.168.1.189 is the actual IP address of the computer inside my network that has the media server on it. And the, uh, the other one, the public IP address, which I'm uh, blocking out, is the one that the uh, remote streaming is going to use. And we'll show you how to do that in the next video. And I can add a new connection if I wanted to add a new server, but you know, one, this one seems to work. And um, close that. Um, connected TV, so I'm just watch, I'm just watching it on a TV, so it's just telling me it's connected. And f for some social networking, you can actually add friends if you want to share things, which I haven't bothered with. And down here can't synchronize until you have my plex which I'm not going to do and then home so it's it's, it's very easy all you've, all you've got to do is set up your content on your server and it just works this is the iPhone and the iPad running the same movie at the same time using the plex apps